tourism and hospitality. Future is there. Fantastic future is there. Uh, it's a very career oriented industry. Mm. But remember, it's not easy, especially the culinary profession. Uh, those days we, we were the back benches, you know, we were behind the curtain. Today, we are the front liners. Earlier, probably, education wasn't that much important as much today. If you want to be a professional chef, then you have to follow the right path. This industry, unless you upgrade, uh, you don't retain uh, customers. You see. We, are, we are responsible for the health of people, uh, no matter how modernized you may become. But don't forget the originality of the food. You know, lal mas ka rahe hain, sangri ka saag hai ya, kya gatta kari ka rahe hain ya. Believe me, the best profession in the hospital industry is culinary. Because you are talented, kya tena ki jiske paas hunar hai, wo zindagi bar usko koi prava nahi. Hi, I'm Shreya Vijay, and today we have a very special guest joining us. A man whose passion for cooking and dedication to culinary arts has inspired countless number of chefs and food lovers alike. He is the Vice President of FNB Production and Executive Chef at Me Meridian Hotel New Delhi and also the President of Chefs Association. Please welcome Chef Davinder Kumar. Thank you so much sir for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. and I. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, discussion. It's great to have you here with us. So I would like to start the conversation with your culinary journey. You know, how did you start your career, and what inspired you to become a chef? Interesting. Uh, this was uh, soon after passing out uh, uh, graduation in commerce from Delhi University way back in 1972. All right. Yes. I was uh, introduced in this hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. uh, joined uh, uh, the Ubro Intercontinental. Now it's called the Ubro Daily. All right. And uh, worked there, and uh, I was introduced in this culinary profession. And that time, uh, you know, there was a transformation happening in this uh, culinary profession, especially. Mm -hmm. And I was quite fascinated because I was looking for. Uh, course where I could learn the skills, craftsmanship, and uh, I knew this was the future was in this profession because you know there's a talent and skills involved. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it was uh, challenging because those days uh, this profession was dominated by you know uh, master chefs, okay. so called kanzamas. They were not academically qualified, but they were they possess excellent skills. You okay. see. So learning from them was a challenge, you know, because they were very possessive about their uh, skills, you know. Okay. Uh, I did a two years uh, intensive uh, uh, course at the Obroys Intercontinental at that time, and then I was uh, sponsored to further specialize in French cuisine in France. Wow. And uh, of course, condition was that I learned French. This uh, made my base very strong, you know, and then having having worked there with best chefs, came back, held various positions in a Broyes group, you know, in India and abroad and uh, uh, reached up to the top position. And uh, then way back in 1985, I joined La Meridian in New Delhi. So, yeah, I want to talk about that. So, how did you get associated with La Meridian? You see, uh, I had that French accent and French background, food, cuisine, okay. plus the French and this uh, La Meridian was a French, okay. uh, uh, you know, chain owned by uh, Air France at that time. Okay. And uh, I was given that preference and having uh, uh, traveled widely and uh, specialized in French cuisine. It was very nice. I think uh, it was a great opportunity for me to, to uh, uh, work on concepts, uh, planning of new kitchens, planning of new restaurants. And, uh, uh, you know, I like to mention here that when I joined this profession, we had foreigners, you know. You know, Walking we had here. foreigners as executive chefs and uh, uh, expertise wasn't there at that time. In Indians? In, in India. In India. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, 
that was the reason I was sent abroad and uh, to to, uh, to learn French cuisine things. and okay. the logistics mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so since then until today, uh, there has never been a need to call an expat chef here. Because so, we have people like you. Absolutely. Yeah. So earlier probably education wasn't that much important as much today mm -hmm. because science and art and so much of technology, AI is there. And then uh, of course this profession, a uh, lot of innovation and creativity is involved. Uh, so education is a must. Education so we brought must. that chain today because uh, those days where we were back benches, you know, we were behind the curtain today we are the front liners. This is the biggest chain yeah. that today uh, chefs like us are the decision maker in any organization. We are rather the brand ambassador, food brand ambassador of any any hotel, you see. So chefs play a very pivotal role yes. in running a food and beverage and food and beverage is the backbone of any hotel or any hospitality. True so that. that has been the chain today uh, that today uh, chef's image, chef's positioning uh, has uh, really got elevated in the industry and in society as large. Mm -hmm. Okay, those days, joining this profession when uh, my colleagues, uh, you know, they were uh, opting for medicine, engineering, you know, engineering, banking, yeah, yeah uh, CA. And uh, I opted for kitchen. So, how was your family's reaction? <laughs> you know, when you told them you want to become a chef. Yeah, it was, uh, of course, uh, a surprise for them. Okay. But भाई आप खाना बनाओगे, प्याज काटोगे, और भाई बर्तन धोगे. So, uh, as God, uh, uh, you know, helped me and blessed me. So, it's been a uh, a wonderful journey. Uh, you know, when you achieve success then hardships are forgotten, you know. Yeah. So when success came, as God has been very kind, and uh, uh, they also started appreciating that I did not make a mistake. Hmm. I took the right to see in. So today, uh, I mean, having risen to this rank, it makes me feel proud that being a chef, you know. So, sir, you have been working here since like last three decades and you were in the opening team of Le Meridian and uh, you built the kitchen and everything from scratch. So, could you share some challenges, achievements or memorable moments? You see, memorable is A, I remember when we were to open the hotel, you know, the time was very short, deadline was there. So, working day and night and conceptualizing the food cuisine hmm. uh, has been a very challenge and then uh, uh, preparing food for some of the very top delegates, head of states uh, has been uh, very memory again hmm. because this is one industry where you come across uh, so top and delegate people, you know of yeah. course here recently in last year we had uh, G20 yeah. right where uh, we had many heads of stays and top delegates staying. Yeah. So entire hotel was almost booked. Was again very challenging when you, you know, I, and I met all of them. Hmm. We, I cooked food for them and made them taste our regional cuisines of India. And uh, they were so highly appreciative and they have gone back with an amazing uh, experience and taste and flavor that uh, Indian food is uh, beyond that tikka. It's yeah. much. <laughs> so they, they, you know, whether it's pani puri or whether it's, uh, you know, dala uh, dahi wala papri or, you know, butter chicken or, you know, name any, whether it's dosa or a very innovative way of doing that. Hmm. Okay, so every chef, you know, has a philosophy of his or her own. So what is your philosophy like? How would you describe it? And how does it influence the dishes that you cook? My philosophy is that uh, I believe in excellence. Hmm. Secondly, I believe in you know uh, making my customers uh, smile. There must be a smile on his face. Hmm. I want my customers to go happy. And the food which I prepare, my philosophy is I prepare with fresh ingredients and ensuring that food is uh, uh, nutritious. Hmm. 
Hmm. And other than that, where my focus is on sustainable cooking practices, because I have done a lot of work on having authored many cookery books. Okay. One of the books which I have uh, last written is Second Meal, which is cooking through food scraps, which are generally put to trash. Okay. So it's a step towards uh, mindful cooking, where I say maximize uh, you know nutrients and minimize food wastage. I believe in you know uh, resilience in a you know agile, and uh, I believe in innovating and upgrading skills is very important. Exactly. That's what I tell my team. I said, look, you have to continue honing your skills. You have to continue learning. Hmm. Uh, you have to, uh, you know, upgrading is very important because this industry, unless you upgrade, uh, you don't retain uh, customers. You see. So as you told that you need to keep upgrading yourself, and you have been working since last five decades. So what are the, you know, uh, changes that you have uh, uh, faced or changes that you have observed in these five decades? I think a. Uh, of course, technology has uh, made a big uh, impact. Okay. It has made uh, work much easy, much convenient. Number one, number two, availability resources are much bigger and better than before. It has become easier. Yeah, I think with uh, things which were never available in India are being grown hmm. in India. They are available as uh, you know, it's being promoted that our honorable prime ministers and you know focus on making India. Yes. So uh, a lot of products available, I think, is there. And at the, at the same time, I think uh, uh, food has also evolved over the years. Food has gone to the next level because of technology. Because you see, today uh, the client is well traveled. You see. Hmm. Right. I always say one thing that four decades ago, you served what you wanted. Today, you serve what the customer wants. See the change. Yeah. You cannot stick to one style. Food presentation has drastically changed. Uh, we were very, you know, very, very conducive to those old style. You know, no boundaries today. Hmm. You can innovate. But very important, which I tell my uh, uh, young chefs, is that uh, no matter how modernized you may become, but don't forget the originality of the food. It's just like I would say that <coughs> how modern you may become, how smart you may become, but never forget the values, uh, you know, the Sanskriti, Sanskar, jo hai mare, wo nahi bhujne. Likewise, khane bhi bhi, hmm. ki aap most बहुत बेहतरीन प्रेजेंटेशन दे रहे हैं मगर द फिश इटसेल्फ मस्ट बी टेस्टी यू नो फ्लेवर्स मिसिंग नहीं होने चाहिए बहुत को बहुत बिल्कुल आज अगर आप यू नो लाल मांस खा रहे हैं यू नो संगरी का साग है या क्या गट्टा करी खा रहे हैं या राइट पर वो राजस्थानी कड़ी जो खा रहे हैं अगर वो लाल मांस लास बेथानी चिल्ली से नहीं बना और क्या फिर you may serve it in a golden plate that has no meaning yeah. so it's very important i have zero con you know tolerance on quality that that's as a leader that's my forte yeah no nothing you no know? and then of course uh, 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 nutrition part hmm. it's very important i think <clears throat> as chefs i always say that you know we are responsible we are we are responsible for the health of people we yeah. cannot ignore that fact you know i have to make sure that the food which you are enjoying is fresh it's authentic it's the way it's been described it's being delivered and it's healthy it's, it's nutrition i think it's very important that you you bring that you know the spark must continue the newness the innovation you very know, absolutely right so the people who want to become chef in 2024 or like next year so what advice would you give to them i think a it's a very growing industry tourism and hospitality 
फ्यूचर इज है फैंटास्टिक फ्यूचर इज है ज्वाइनिंग दिस इंडस्ट्री वुड बी इट्स अ वेरी कैरियर ओरिएंटेड इंडस्ट्री बट रिमेंबर इट्स नॉट ईजी स्पेशली द कलरी प्रोफेशन यू हैव टू वर्क वेरी हार्ड यू हैव टू हैव पैशन यू हैव टू बी पैशन अवॉर्ड कुकिंग एंड थर्डली इज एट इफ यू हैव ए पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड देन ओनली यू इंजॉय ज्वाइन दिस इंडस्ट्री एंड इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड देन अगेन देन यू नीड दैट इन दिस इंडस्ट्री यू नीड दैट you know the skill in you how you carry yourself your communication skill your you know the personality traits very important okay. because this industry is as it says very glamorous industry yeah. even in the culinary profession today as i said earlier that <clears throat> we are not no more bank benches now back mm-hmm. benches that we are we are frontliners yeah so we interact with guests now communication skills It's very important, and uh, I think uh, uh, you need to be a man who, you know, you have to have that greedy mind. You, you know, uh, you know, you should continue learning, be a student forever. You know, this is this what you keep innovating. You know that mindset you must have. That it's a beautiful profession. Believe me, the best profession in the hospital industry is culinary. Culinary, okay. Because you are talented. कहते हैं ना कि जिसके पास हुनर है वो जिंदगी भर उसको कोई परवाह नहीं यू कैन लिव एनी वे इन द वर्ल्ड एनी वे सो यू लर्न टू लिव दैट आई थिंक यू नीड टू लर्न द बेसिक्स बी फोकस्ड एंड बी फोकस एंड हैव ए ड्रीम टू ग्रो देन ओनली यू ग्रो सो इज देयर एनी सर्टेन एजुकेशन पाथ और स्टेप दैट वन मस्ट टेक टू बिकम अ शेफ और एंटर इनटू कलिनरी इंडस्ट्री देयर आर इज अ शॉर्टकट इज अ proper of course you have diploma courses available mm-hmm. you have degree courses you have uh, di- diploma courses right diploma courses are one one and a half year then we have degree today you have uh, normal you know hospitality management you have mm-hmm. hotel management okay. courses so national council so many institutes are there then you have culinary diploma now okay. diploma in culinary art especially for cooking yes okay. i would recommend that do that and for people who cannot afford to do that then there are short courses available you know hmm. one year as ads then you have apprenticeship mm-hmm. available you know then you become an associate hmm. but when you have a degree then you can you know join as a management trainee kitchen management trainee so that leverage just like you know when you do arts candy you step into anything right you had small craft course right here when you do degree or mba and and you know and as i said uh, sky is the limit yeah. scope but is fantastic so uh, these are courses are available and one should do that and uh, very easy you understand what's good and bad so once and then you come to the kitchen and you are already you know equipped with the knowledge yeah. you only have to put it to That's practice right. Yeah. yeah. So these days, people are also, you know, uh, have people have their own YouTube cooking channels and everything. They are becoming chefs on YouTube, and they are garnering a lot of support and, you know, uh, views from audience. So, what is what are your views on that? Well, <clears throat> this this is the trend. You know, okay. you have so many home chefs. You know, self-made chefs. Self-made chefs. So this parallel will continue. Hmm. But if you want to be a professional chef. then you have to follow the right path okay. so uh, uh this will happen i think uh, some do it as a as a profession some do it as a passion Absolutely. as a hobby so everything is going on and uh, the only thing is that my advice to you would be that please show the correct thing hmm. don't do incorrect don't do because you see uh, remember the audience you are teaching audience if you tell them you're making a lal mas i always say i'm uh, taking a gatta curry hmm. sagri ka yeah. then make the correct way you know? correct 
Uh, one last thing that I would like you to tell, since it's summer and quite hot out there, could you please recommend three summer refreshing drinks to our audience? And also, we would love it if you could, you know, share the recipes for those. Evergreen is your jaljeera. Jaljeera. Oh, so there amazing. are a couple of, I mean, evergreen. I would say. Hmm. Of course, then we have uh, uh, chaat and all. In India, uh, there's so much of variety. The, the moment you look at it, you have, of course, uh, Ambi Pana. Hmm. I really love it. Yeah. Ambi Pana, you know, raw mango roasted drink. It's amazing. It's so delicious, I think. Then, of course, uh, I, uh, I would also recommend Thandai. Thandai. Very tasty. From, very tasty. Yeah. Evergreen. Hmm. You know, if you have a good charge, just imagine, it can replace anything. If you have good ambi pana, you know, it's just so refreshing of it. Yeah, exactly. For instance, the cheapest drink I would recommend is have cucumber juice. The smoothies have become very trendy now. Trendy, yeah. Very trendy. They're very healthy, I would very say. Very tasty as well. Yeah, very as tasty. long as you don't enrich it with sugar. Of course. Yeah. We just tried uh, avocado, okay. our ageless smoothie. Very interesting. You can try that. We have uh, avocado. Uh, you have banana. You have organic uh, honey. Little. Uh, you have almond milk. Okay. Yeah. Try. Very very interesting. You know? So why is it like? Why why did you name it ageless smoothie? You're so healthy. Okay. They don't. You, know, yeah. you don't age after drinking yeah. it. Okay. So yeah, avocado. Right, you got banana, hmm. you got almond milk, you got organic honey, yeah. and so it's so delicious, you know. Churn it up, little cracked ice, it's so yummy. So I think uh, my conclusion, of course, you have uh, modern drinks available, hmm. all these mocktails, but nothing to beat our traditional, traditional drinks. drinks. But I think these are a couple of drinks that you can try and you know enjoy summer. It's going to be very very hot this time. Yeah. Watch out. All right, sir. Thank you so much for talking to us. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Same here. Thank you.